It actually stands for notes and stuff transmitted over relays. And those notes can have content of any kind. So it already has a somewhat advantage over Bitcoin in the sense that you don't really need to run your own node. I mean, it's just pure signal. It's so nice because all the politics are not in there. It's just, it is awesome. You can see everybody building. Hey, everyone, welcome to the show. I'm here with William. William, I am thrilled to have you here. I really, I'm really excited about this conversation. Yeah, it's great to be here. Uh, it's the first time I've, <laughs> I haven't watched too many years uh, podcasts, but uh, yeah, I'm excited to to be on and chat about Nostra. So this is, this topic is incredible. I think we just need to start for everybody in our audience. I would imagine most are not familiar with what we're talking about. So okay. give them a, just a basic overview of what Nostra is. So Nostra is an idea that started from someone named Fiat Jaff. He was a Bitcoiner. He is a Bitcoiner in the Bitcoin community. And he was just trying to come up with a way to build a social network like Twitter, but make it decentralized so that it's not in control of a single party. Because we we're starting to see the, you know, the issues crop up around that recently. So he just came together with like the simple, it was just like a markdown document, like, hey, how could we do this? And that's where it started. And, you know, I saw this technology a while back and I'm just, hey, let's try to build a client. And then started building on it. I've just been like blown away at how, how impressive it is and how simple it is. So for people that are hearing that, they, I think the use case is really obvious. Decentralized social media, you see both parties, political parties trying to gain control. I think you see a lot of large banks kind of trying to control the boards of like Facebook and Twitter and trying to control the messaging. So that's really what you're after, right? But doing it in practice is the difficult part. So talk to us a little bit about why that's so hard to solve from just a technical standpoint, from a broad brush overview. Yeah. So when you're trying to build a network that like everyone in the world can connect to and communicate with each other, um, you naturally have centralizing effects just because to even pull that off, you need to some beefy servers and those people are run, those servers are run by people, someone in, in uh, so the minute you try to make things more decentralized, typically the user experience gets very poor. So these networks tend to be kind of like a little bit more complicated than a centralized solution like Twitter. But yeah, so now we're just trying to figure out what's the best way to do this in a way that we can scale it out to more and more people. So this is where Nostra comes in. We, we think we have a pretty good idea of how to do this with like not just one person in control, but maybe like a small set of people. So it's like a little bit more decentralized. And yeah, it, it's, a tough, it's a tough problem, but I think we actually might be able to crack it with this one. What's the foundation? Because my understanding is that you have an event and I think it's really important for people to understand that you're going to the protocol level and then we talk about the, the client level. So get into some of that and also talk more specifically about this idea of the event and the simplicity around the event in the protocol level. Yeah. So the way I like to describe it is if you're not familiar with like internet protocols, they underlie a lot of the technology we use, like our web browser, it, it, you know, it speaks the HTTP and TLS protocol, and that allows us to, you know, contact any server. The browser knows how to fetch the page and render it and things like that. There's other protocols like email where we can run many different email clients. So like, you know, Gmail, Outlook, and they all can talk to each other because they're using this underlying language. So this is all what a protocol is. It's just an underlying language for that computers can use to talk to each other. So what Nostra is, we're trying to, you know, what's the language, what's the computer language for social media? And so... The basic idea that we're trying to go for here is instead of like we're a Twitter-like model where you're just sending a tweet to a single server, you just send that event or that note, like you mentioned, you just send it to like as any server you want, but they all kind of have the same, they understand the message that you're sending them. So they'll understand like, okay, this is a tweet that this person sent out and they save it to their server. And then other people who are also connected to those relays can just pull those messages. So instead of just getting it from one server, you're just now getting it from 10 servers. So that kind of decentralizes the risk in terms of you being censored or you being like your speech being controlled, but also you get the benefits of having like high performance servers and versus like some type of peer to peer model where we're all trying to get it from each other, which can be kind of bad for performance. So yeah, it's, it's a new type of protocol. No, no, I don't know that many protocols that like do it in this particular model, but for the use case of social media, it's, a, it works really well. How are you able to make the size of the events small enough that if a person runs a relay or their own private server, that it's just not you know, tons of information and data that storing, how do you truncate that and make it small, but still carry the underlying message? Yeah. So, you know, there's all this blockchain craze that took off recently. And this idea where you just collect everyone's transaction, everyone has to store everyone's transaction. This is not what Nostra is. Nostra is not a blockchain. It's not these, like, um, we're not trying to achieve global consensus. 
So if you want to just run a relay in your own house that just stores your messages and your messages for your friends, that's completely okay. Like you probably don't want to sync Twitter's database to your node at home because you'll probably, your computer will catch fire. So it's kind of specifically designed in a way that allows you to get the messages from the people you care about from your own nodes. And then you can ignore a lot of the other busier stuff. And so we can kind of start to talk about like to what different types of relays there might be in the future. I'm sort of thinking about this a lot now in terms of like what's a public relay versus like a private relay. But yeah, we're just starting to see the beginnings of this because right now they're just a bunch of public relays that everyone's just kind of sending all their messages to. But it's kind of starting to get kind of crazy with like a lot of crazy people on the relays. So we're trying to think about how we're going to scale this out and what that's going to look like. So well, that's one of the biggest questions that I see is five years from now, scale wise, how in the world can something like this scale when you talk about the incentives around people running their own and you're using the term relay for people that might not be dialed in. Just think of that as like your own personal server or anybody can, you know, host as many other person's persona that they want or as few as they want. But go ahead and explain a little bit of that scaling. Yeah. So the way that I look at it, it really in some sense is like you take the Times Square. So Twitter and Elon is trying to, you know, Twitter is going to be the new t public town square on the Internet. That's fine, but it's in control of one person. So what a relay is that in my mind is, you know, it's democratizing the town square on the internet to the, so that anyone can become a platform of speech that you can connect to. So they're kind of like free speech nodes on the internet. So the way that I see it breaking down is I can see it, there's probably going to be like a public good or like a public relays, which are kind of crazy. There's gonna be a lot of spam, but anyone can go there and get the message out. It might be a shelling point for meeting up and things like that. But maybe you don't want to have that crazy hectic wild west of communication. So Maybe you'd pay some money to, to whitelist your pub key and get onto another, like maybe more semi-private public relay where you can have a more civilized conversation. But the cool thing about clients is they can connect to both. So I can connect to the public relay. I can connect to the more, you know, chill relay that's like less crazy. And then I can turn them on and off at will and just see different perspectives of the worldwide conversation. So those are like the two modes I've been thinking about recently. And then, you know, you can have a node in your own house just to back up your own speech. What's, what's cool is that every time you send a speech into the internet, um, you know, it's getting backed up onto your node or in your house. And then if you ever want to broadcast your history of your speech, you can do that to the public world, to the internet. And just backing it up has that benefit of, you know, no one can just delete your speech off the internet or take you off the internet. You can always broadcast it to new, to new relays. So yeah, it has a lot of cool properties in that aspect. So there's a lot of people, Bitcoiners specifically, that are already running their full nodes. And I've seen a lot of chatter with people saying, hey, I want my Umbral full node, which is for people not familiar with Umbral, it's basically a turnkey, really simple. You don't have to have a lot of technical chops to be able to run your own full node if you're running this Umbral version. And so people are saying, I want an application on my Umbral that I can just basically run my own relay, my own Nostr relay by clicking a couple buttons and it sets it up on the hardware that I already have that I'm running my Umbral. Is something like this possible? If it is possible, how much, how many uh, personas could you basically load or store on something like that for somebody who's just running maybe a tera of hard drive on their Umbral? Yeah, so I actually do this. I don't have an Umbral, but I have a machine at home that I connect to over like a VPN. So I have a private relay that I connect to. And the reason I do this is A, to back up my speech, just in case, even, I mean, I, I run a public relay and I'm like, I'm not worried about that going down, but it's just nice to have a local cache of my speech that I have backed up. And I think that's a really good, just to start a really good use case, just a backup idea. But you could also use that as a local cache of speech that you want from the internet. So for instance, let's say I have a bunch of people that really want to make sure that I get their speech from the internet. So maybe I'll know that they're on certain public relays and I'm worried that those relays might go down. So I can sync their speech to my local node and only store the things that I care about. And it'll be really fast and it's on your local network and things like that. So I see that as a really cool use case of having an umbral like free speech node just for those use cases. Uh, but in terms of like you syncing the entire public relays to like to your local node is probably not, it's not reasonable. There's no reason why you want to do that unless you really want to just see a public conversation and have it backed up locally. You could do it, which is you need to have a lot more space in that sense. But to give you an idea of how much this takes the store, I've probably been running the biggest relay for a couple months now and I'm only up to like four or five gigs. So that's going to quickly wow because it's just small text it's just text we're not storing yeah. anything. so it's just all that's in an event is just a content some tags a signature and your pub key which is just a hex pub key of your schnorr key so yeah it's uh, very small in terms of what you can store do you think that there's been enough functionality built into the events these individual events of the Noster protocol or do you think that i know there's a, similar to bitcoin there's this 
submission process. If people think that there needs to be more functionality added into the protocol, there's kind of this community. Talk to us about that process and then talk to us about additional functionality that you think might need to be added into it or removed from it. Yeah. So the interesting thing about Bitcoin is that, you know, it requires some form of global consensus. So anytime you try to change the protocol, everyone kind of has to agree. And if you, if, so, if people don't agree to upgrade, then everything starts breaking and we don't want like Bitcoin notes breaking around the world because then people can't transact and it's not good. So Bitcoin is very restricted in terms of like how you upgrade it and things like that. Whereas not sure it doesn't require a global consensus. So, and I, so I didn't even talk about this yet because I was specifically focusing on the social media use case, but Nostra isn't technically doesn't need to be a speech or social media pr protocol. It actually stands for notes and stuff transmit, transmitted over relays. And those notes can be, have content of any kind. So there's some people using it for like playing chess. You know, there's like chess games going over Nostra right now. And the way that works is that each note has like something called a kind and all it is a number. So speech notes are just kind one. Your contact list is kind three. And there's direct messages, encrypted end-to-end -end encrypted direct messages, which is like kind four. But there's like an integer number of kinds you can do. So if you have a custom application and you want to run it on Nostra, the protocol is flexible enough to do that. And there's nothing we can do to stop you because you can just run your own relay and put your own notes of your own kinds on. And that's fine. That's what it's meant for. So it's really extensible in terms of types of applications you can build upon it. So that leads into like, okay, maybe there's going to be a sub stack for Nostra where you can just, you don't even need to run a, or even, yeah, so content publishing or publishing blogs, you don't even need to run a server. You can just publish it to the public relays. There's a lot of cool use cases that people are not even exploring yet. So, wow. So you, I think you said kind four was encrypted messaging. Yeah. Uh, when we set up this discussion, that's yeah. how I contacted you was yeah. over this encrypted messaging system. I'm curious if. In your opinion, do you find that to be more protected pr from a privacy standpoint, something like Signal? So Signal is probably much more secure because they they have like hardcore crypto people who are working on state-of-the-art ratcheting technology for to make sure it's forward secret. Our encryption spec right now isn't that good. It was kind of just thrown together. So there are some flaws with it. So for instance, if you ever leaked your key or I've ever leaked my key or someone got yeah. access to it, they can see yeah. both of our conversations. Whereas it would be much harder to do on Signal because they have much better properties for that. But there's no reason why we couldn't build something like Signal on top of Nostra because of the extent sensibility. So I have a bounty. So uh, we'll get into that, but I have a bounty that's like, if you want to implement a cool Signal like level spec on top of Nostra, I'm happy to pay to get that going because I, I definitely want better uh, secure comms as well. Going back to the discussion on the Umbral, as far as people running their own full node, Let's say that there's an app that's built, a Nostra app that's integrated into it, and I want my node to basically monitor 100 different people that I personally follow very closely. From a storage standpoint, going back to you were talking about how small the storage space is, do you think that for the typical person that wants to closely follow 100 people, that should be no problem to basically input those addresses of those people? Yeah, I think for most people, they won't even need to run a, their own node, right? So this is more of already the power users. So this protocol is set up so you don't need to run anything. So it already has a somewhat advantage over Bitcoin in the sense that you don't really need to run your own node. But it's, and it'd be, again, the protocol is designed that way, just so it's just that easy. And not only that, you don't need to you don't need to run a node. You don't even need to have a phone number or an email address. You just just generate a key and get going. So that is already huge compared to like what most things you're used to online, where you need to like KYC yourself and things like that. But if you do want to run your own node and you do want to sync stuff locally, yeah, it's super trivial. And it, even if it does get too big, you it's not like a blockchain where you need to keep the whole history. You can just like chop off the data because a lot of the time there's this thing on social networks where older data seems not that interesting or not as useful or the value of older data isn't that unless you're like going back and looking for old tweets. So there's there might be a concept of like an archival relay and maybe more just like a real time relay that you don't really care about the older data. So, yeah, it's, it's very flexible in that sense. What if somebody, okay, so let's say I'm running my own relay and I wanted to be nefarious and say, well, that will just take your feed as example. And let's say that I'm trying to misrepresent something that you're saying, and I want to create an event that says the opposite of what maybe you said. Mm -hmm. um, and so then I'm propagating this event that's a fake event. How do the clients, I know it has to do with you signing, basically signing that event, but if I was going to try to misrepresent something, how is that protected against? I'll walk people through that. Yeah. So again, so these messages are these just small JSON blobs. And so JSON is just like, you know, a data format. It's very simple text. So the content, so the, yeah, the content, the tags, and pretty much all the data on the note is signed using something like very similar to a Bitcoin key. 
and it's called your, yeah, it's just your Nostra key. So when that signature is included in the message and when you send it to a relay, the relay will actually check the signature and it won't even store that message unless it's like a valid note from that person. So that's why that signature is really important because your client will say, yes, verified, this is from this person. But there are some things that people can do like phishing, like attacks, because there's no, there's no unique username on this protocol. Really the only thing unique is your pub key, which is like a long key. So you need some way to distinguish if a person is like, like, how do you like, people are not going to be memorizing people's pub keys. The way that I do it in the Domus client is that if you're following the person, it'll show like an icon next to their name, like, Hey, this is someone, you know, but if someone's trying to pretend to be someone else, you know, it's very visible because it's from a different key. And there's other things we're doing as well, which is domain verification. So you can have like jb55 at jb55.com and it'll be very apparent on your profile. So you know, that person actually um, is who they say they are. So. Amazing. Okay. So let's talk about the clients for people that are non-technical listening to this. I'm going to provide what I think it is. And then I want you to correct me and give us the actual definition. But so like people are familiar with Twitter and so they like, they log into quote unquote Twitter. And that would be, let's just say that that's a client. Yeah. Then you have Facebook. That might be another client that people hear and recognize from like a brand standpoint. Um, these are just interfaces to the Noster protocol that is uh, all the messages that people have created throughout their lifetimes. And so like you're developing a client right now. Talk to us about this client, this software that you're developing that allows people to tap into this network of messages that are out there. Yeah. So right now, since all the social media companies, they're not using any underlying protocol. So their protocol is simply their API to their centralized servers, and it's usually very locked down and they don't interoperate. So you, if you send a tweet on Twitter, it's not going to show up on Facebook, right? This just, it's not something that people expect because it just seems so ridiculous. But the minute you have an underlying protocol, you know, sending a tweet and it showing up on Facebook would be a very reasonable thing. And so like, or even just retweeting a tweet from Facebook, if that's, I don't know if they have retweets, I haven't been there for like whatever, whatever this thing is <laughs> It might show up on the Twitter side, as long as you have some common language, right? Yeah. So. This is kind of how it works right now. So I, I've written an iOS client called Damas and you, it connects, it doesn't do anything it's fancy. It doesn't connect to my servers. It just connects to relays. And then, so the messages you see on that client are, could be from, people could be posting from the web clients that I don't even write, I haven't written. It's just people have written, there's probably like 10 or 20 clients that not people have written on Nostra and people are all communicating each other. So yeah, it's just, it enables this more flexibility in terms of what types of clients you want to use. Like for instance, I know someone who runs a terminal client. And this might be really good for people who, for accessibility reasons, just being able to use a text you know, mode version of your Twitter client. So yeah, there's a lot more flexibility in terms of what you, the experiences you'd want to have on Usher just, just by having that flexibility between the clients. So. I can tell you, so like I have my iPhone, I have the Domus app downloaded. It's D-A-M-U-S for people. So it's in test flight right now. So if you want to download it onto your phone, you have to download test flight and then you go to the Domus website and you can download the app right off the app store and it works just like Twitter right there on my phone. I mean, it looks a lot like Twitter, the feel, the interface, everything is very much like Twitter. And then I go to my computer and I go to astral.ninja yeah. and I entered my, you know, I signed in with my private keys and which that's a whole nother thing yeah. for people. There's a safer way to do it. And we might get yeah. too technical through an app called Albi, which is what I would highly recommend people do if they're working off of their desktop computer. But for simplicity, I went to this astral.ninja website. I logged into my account that I've been creating these effectively tweets from my iPhone through the Damus app. And it's like I... It's, it's almost like what we were describing earlier, where I was logged into Twitter on my phone and then I went to my computer and it was like, I logged into Facebook and I'm seeing the same exact messaging. It's crazy. Yeah. It's, uh, and it's, and we all support like different features. Like I think Astral Ninja doesn't even have likes or anything. So it causes a lot of confusion because they're like, when people are talking on the network, they're like, oh, this is broken. And then everyone's like, okay, what client are you talking about? Like what's broken? <laughs> So there's a lot of like interoperability we still got to figure out. But for the most part, like if you're just sending that text messages, we can all kind of communicate with each other, which has been really cool. And, and it has this network effect. And I think this is going to be very underappreciated. I think, I don't know if it's, I think it's underappreciated, the network effect that you have. There's a reason why email is still little like everywhere. It's because the network effect that like everyone has it, mm -hmm. everyone has servers and everyone has clients and we're just so used to it. To having it as a protocol is really helps it spread to a wider audience. So. Well, explain this to me. So we have an email protocol. 
why couldn't we use that protocol for this type of activity? What's the differences? Yeah. So with email, there's not a concept of querying notes. Because if you, let's say I wanted to like pull an email thread from somewhere. Yeah. There's not a really a good way to do that. And maybe, I don't know, there might be a way to do it to hack it, but it wasn't really designed for that use case. It was more designed for like sending these like long worded, long worded letters and stuff between servers. Whereas this is, we're trying to build it more for a Twitter-like experience. So you maybe you could build Twitter over over the email protocol, but that would be yeah pretty pretty crazy. <laughs> well, it seems like that protocol was designed for point to point, where this is more designed for just broadcasting. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 So you're just broadcasting a message to the public, and then you know you people may or may not hear you, but depending on which relays you're connected to, so it's very much different than uh, maybe it's more closer to the Usenet or whatever the old school <laughs> mail servers or something, but. Do you see the clients, so like you're doing the Damus app, do you see clients specializing in certain benefits or restricting things in the future that gravitate? And does that potentially cause kind of a split in the network or these compartmentalized groups? Yeah, I think I think so. I think we're going to see a lot of different things play out. There's going to be some clients that just are maximum interoperability and just want to work for all the different types of messages. There's some clients who are just gonna, okay, they, well, they wanna craft a more friendly user experience for their users. So maybe they'll block like all public messages unless you're verified on their platform. And that's okay. I think, you know, they might have them as like a company Slack. You have an internal relay within your company and you just use that for communications mm -hmm. and you can use all the standard clients to talk to your company Slack and it's not controlled by Slack and it's, you, know, it's, you, know, you control your own data. So you get a lot of flexibility for these use cases. Um, so yeah, I can see it playing out in many different ways. It's just, we're very early and I've yet to see, and it's really just public relays right now. So we'll see. So I don't think that Bitcoiners would have this concern, but I think people, other people might, where there's a bit of protection that you currently get with the centralized servers, where you don't have pedophiles, you don't have people doing racial slurs and this type of stuff because it's being monitored with, this is the wild, wild west. I mean, you could literally go on there, say anything you want. From a masked, no one would know you're, everything's an on unless you want to be known who you are. And so it opens up this free communication where people can hide behind. So like, how do you see that playing out? This can't be stopped. This protocol can't be stopped. So I think that that's out of the question. I'm curious if you would agree with that, but what are some of your thoughts on this? Yeah. Again, I think it's just going to come down to, you know, there's going to be a wild west part of the network of the public relays and just crazy people shouting at each other. But even in that mode where you have the public wild west, you can still build clients that only pull messages from your friends. So clients will have very strong filter capabilities. And I suspect, you know, clients might even compete in terms of like creating the best algorithm for filtering a lot of this garbage. Right. Hmm. Um, and this again, should always be a client choice. We shouldn't, you know, I, initially I was always like, oh, well maybe relay should just be completely dumb and just never filter anything. And I'm still kind of along those lines. And I think that clients should provide the tools to filter everything that the people don't want to see. But yeah, it, it's hard to say. Like, I totally imagine there's going to be a situation where you have like private relays that just filter all this stuff and have heavy moderate moderation. And the people who are on the Fediverse right now, they kind of prefer that. Maybe there's a certain type of people who prefer heavy moderation and that's fine. And you can only connect to those relays. But even just today, just having the public relays and all this crazy stuff going on, just being able to just only see messages from your friends and friend of friends already filters out a lot of the nonsense. So again, it's, there's so many different ways to deal with the spam on this network. I'm just, and I've been brainstorming like all the different ways. And I think it's going to be okay. As long as we have this underlying protocol, that's just uncensorable. I think that's the most important part. So we can sort of build these type tools on top of it. So I can tell you from personal experience using your app. So I go into the settings where it's just the people that I follow. I think I'm following like a hundred people on the platform. And I mean, it's just pure signal. It's so nice because all the politics are not in there. It's just, it is awesome. You can see everybody building. And then I'll click on the global search and I'm seeing like the global conversation. And I mean, there's a lot of cesspool there. And I guess I'm kind of curious, I'm assuming you've had the same experience, but from a spam standpoint, how does that evolve? How do you start basically putting a cost to spam and bots and all this. I mean, you're seeing it on Twitter. It's a disaster yeah. of, of bots. So how does that work with Nostra? So I've been thinking about this a lot and I think there's a couple ways to do it. 
again, there's two kind of modes. There's this one mode where you may only want to talk to your friends and that's easy because you can only pull messages from your friends. That's just a query that says, only give me these messages from these pub keys and you'll never see anything from anyone else. That's fine. But if you want more to have more of like an open, you don't know who wants to talk to you. You want to have, you'll be able to accept messages from strangers. Unfortunately, messages from strangers aren't always the nicest messages. <laughs> so I think there will probably be a mode, I'm planning to do this in Domus, where any message from a stranger that either shows up in your DMs or notifications is going to have a cost associated with it. So I put together this spec on an Asher called the proof of work spec that it's based on Hashcash. So Adam's Hashcash, mm. it's basically identical to Hashcash. It's just counting the number of zeros on the ID of the note. And then we have a special way to query number of leading zeros in the protocol. So you can say, okay, if it's not from my friends, but I still want messages from random people, maybe, okay, you can send it to me, but it's going to, you got to do some proof of work to, before I receive that message. And maybe we can put that as a label on your tweet that says, if you're a stranger, you want to send me a message, just know I won't get anything because I'm not going to query it. But if you want to try to send me a message, you got to run your CPU for like an hour. <laughs> so I think that's kind of like one cool way. I don't know how scalable that is, but it's kind of fun. Another way I've been thinking about it is this whole idea that Michael Saylor was talking about at one point is like the orange check. So imagine you go to some service provider and you can just buy a badge. We're working on the badge specs. So you can attach badges to your profile and kind of fun. Um, but maybe you buy this orange check badge and your client recognizes those as be, you can use those to spite fam, uh, fight spam. So if someone has that badge, okay, fine. You can, if you're a stranger, you can reply to my thread. So there's certain types of things. Those are the two that I'm looking at in terms of getting other messages. But yeah, there's other things as well, like just paid relay. So everyone who's on the relay is pays once to get on. So the, those are the things I've been thinking about right now. So. so for people that aren't familiar with Michael's, you know, idea, I would just describe it like this. And this is how Michael also describes it. And when he's trying to explain it to people is just, if you go to a hotel and you check in, they're going to swipe your card for call it a hundred or $200. And they're going to put a hold on the card so that if you would go into the hotel room and break the faucet or do whatever, cause damage to the room, that they've already taken some money from you that you can't claw back. When you think of like your Twitter or Nostra or whatever, and you're posting a tweet and somebody comes in there and is just wrecking havoc and is just a total idiot, um, they would have to post some type of collateral, some small amount, let's just say it's 25 cents to make a post. And if they're in there, you know, swearing at you or just, you know, whatever, they're a bad actor, you can basically take their 25 cents within a certain period of time. Let's say that it's active for one hour or one day or whatever, that they have to basically post this collateral and you can take it if they're a bad actor. And if they're not a bad actor, well, then you don't do that because then you're going to get some type of, uh, there, there would have to be some type of. Uh, this person takes any amount of money that's posted to their feed. So there's like a star ranking or something that talks to your history of whether you're taking people's posts or you yourself are a bad actor on that policy. So that's the idea is just there's an economic consequence to being a bad actor. And so where I'm going with this, William, is you have, a, you, I saw this on Nostra. You said none of this would be possible without the lightning. You, you believe none of this would be possible without the lightning. <clears throat> Explain what you mean by that. Yeah, so Lightning enables a very fast point-to-point -point transactions without like dealing with like the legacy financial system. So this allows for really tight integrations with, you know, incentivizing relays to stay up because it costs money to run a relay. So we're going to need some ways to incentivize relays to run. So if there was an option, so th this originally came about because I'm starting to integrate Lightning more and more into Domus. So right now you can post a lightning invoice on, in a tweet or in a post, and it will just like render a little cool widget. You can click pay. So people love that feature, but th this is just the start um, of this where maybe there'll be a sat button where you click it and then you can just send sats instantly to another person on the network. So I started thinking about like, what is it going to look like when you, anyone, anyone on the network can send, send sats instantly to anyone else on the network and you have these network effects where people are doing this all the time. Well, maybe it'd be cool if you just take a portion, a portion of that and just send it to all the relays you're connected to, to incentivize them to run as well as to maybe even whitelist your key for some temporary amount of time to imagine like, okay, you sent me some sats, so I trust you for now. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you post my thing for and you know the next day. And if you keep sending sats. So that is some sense an aspect of what you were referring to of the orange check where you know, you're know you putting down collateral, you don't get it back. I mean, I, mean, I guess the relay could send it back to you if you're, once you're done, but yeah. So I think that's one p possible way to fight spam. And I think it's really cool. And I think a lightning specifically enables that because it's just so fast and easy and relays can put a little lightning 
invoice or Ellen URL on, on the relay and it's, and your client can easily connect to it and send to it without any coordination, which is really important. So do you find traditional social media platforms being able to benefit from this protocol by incorporating it in some kind of way? I mean, it's all centralized for them today, but maybe they move a little bit to, towards decentralization and then it allows them to optimize their performance. Is that something that you think is possible? So this is already happening. <laughs> so, oh, really? uh, so props to, to Bill um, at minds.com because we had to call with them a couple months ago and with their team and we're like, how can we integrate Nostra into your platform? And they were so, because we talked about ActivityPub and the previous protocols they were looking at and they're like, oh, it's so complicated. And I'm like, well, let's try it with Nostra. So they're able to build, they were able to build the Nostra relay that, you know, if you can connect to it, it's kind of, it's still kind of buggy, uh, um, but we're still working on it. But if you connect to it, you get like this fire hose of events from their platform because they have a lot of users and it allows you to, uh, it uses this feature that they developed called delegation. So they actually created a new spec so that if you go onto the platform and do a post, it'll, it can create events on behalf of a, of a Nostra key that basically gets, that's a bit more complicated, but it basically allows them to post events to Domus and it just works. So it's not, so minds.com is a Nostra client that, that sends notes. And there's no reason why Twitter, for instance, could implement Nostra. It's a really flexible protocol where you can, um, any, any large platform could in theory implement it. So it'd would be cool one day, hopefully one day Domus can connect to like Twitter. So would that save them on cost because they're not having to store <laughs> as much data on their own servers or like what would be the benefit for them or the incentive for them to do something like that? Yeah. So the, in some sense, the Nostra relay would just be an interface to their database. So they still store all the data. The benefit to them is they get access to the wider, if Nostra eventually takes off and everyone's using it then your Slack channel can c communicate via DM to like Twitter or something, right? This like, they get the benefits of that network effect. And then Twitter uh, could just um, become, Twitter could just become the best Nostra client because it's a pretty good client right now. Like I love Twitter. I've been using it since like 2007. So I wish they would implement Nostra, and, but I think it'd be technically kind of challenging just because they built all of their infrastructure around Twitter, but they could totally run a, a Nostra relay even without inter using, with, without the Twitter client itself being a direct Nostra client. Other clients could still connect to Twitter. I don't know. It would be hard, but I, I, it's doable. And that's kind of cool that it's even possible. So. so we had mentioned earlier that you're designing this Damus client that connects into the Noster relay of all these messages. And this is on iPhone, iOS. The first question I saw on Twitter whenever I said I was going to be interviewing you is when WE, when Android. <laughs> when Android. This is my number one question. And I'm like, oh yeah, I'll just, I'll do it tomorrow. I'll just put together a whole Android client. Uh, no, but I was, I was working on one when things were like much more chill and I was, I had time to like tinker and like build multiple clients. But <clears throat> yeah, I have so many users on iOS now. It's just, I've been just trying to put out fires over there and I would love to get back to the Android client. I'm just hoping with someone to just build one and then I can just use that. So I don't have to do it. <laughs> uh, I'm still waiting for that. There's a couple in progress and I hope they'll be up to speed and uh, up to feature parity with Domus one day, but yeah, I would love to, but I don't know if I have time to do it. When do you think you're going to get out of test flight? Oh, I'm going to do it soon. I probably like, I'm going to try to submit it today or tomorrow. Oh, wow. Okay. Because we hit the beta limit. So we hit 10,000. We went from like 5,000 users to 10,000 users in like two days. I didn't even know there was like a beta limit on test flight. I was like, okay, I guess I should get releasing this app now. So that's a good sign. <laughs> yeah, apparently. <laughs> yeah, thanks to Jack. Like ever since Jack started tweeting about it, it's just like everything went crazy. So, ha um, Biggest challenge you face right now on the Damus app? I think the biggest challenge right now is getting the UX up to par with like what people are familiar with on Twitter. Cause like I have this, okay, I'm not even an iOS developer. I just had an iPhone at the time and I just wanted an app for Nostra. I have the first time I ever built an, I, an iOS app. So I have no idea what I'm doing. So the UX is completely terrible. I'm not even a UX person. So I'm surprised that it's even like usable, but I've had a lot of people who are helping me out and making it much better. So that's nice. Other than that, once I release it to the public, my biggest concern is this the spam issue. Because if people have yeah. a really bad experience where you have like Nazi propaganda, of like flying in the global feeds, like that's going to be instantly probably banned from the app store to begin with. And so I'm going to need a way to filter that. So I was thinking maybe just maybe there's a premium version where you can like get a, a paid relay or something. But then again, we're already starting to move to like this, uh, you know, privatized relays, but maybe it's inevitable, ine inevitable. I don't know. I'm just worried that people have a bad experience. They don't, because a lot of times they'll join an app thinking it's just going to be like another Twitter and everything's moderated for them. But in reality, this is like, this is wild west, right? And, and I can't control what people see in some sense, because if they connect to a relay, I'm like, I can't control what you see. It's just, that's what you got from that relay. I mean, I can't stop that speech, right? So that's my biggest concern right now is if I, once it starts getting more popular. 
You know, for a person who's hearing what you just said, they might think, oh my God, this is going to be, it's just going to turn into a centralized thing. If the the app store can moderate these apps, these clients like this, but I would maybe push back and say, I don't think that it is a centralizing force because anybody can go out and run their own relay. It's not hard to, well, I won't say it's not hard to do because I'm struggling. (laughs) I think in the future, it's going to be very easy to do. And the cost, the barrier to entry to run your own small relay is going to be very minimal uh, in the grand scheme of things for people to do it. And so I can still check into all these notes via web browser, right? That's not something that Apple controls. Right. I'm curious. So if somebody's posting content there, it's not your app that's creating that content. Right. So how would you be responsible for the global messaging that's happening on the Nostra protocol? And how would you be held responsible for that? Or would you not? And that's the thing. In some sense, it's just a web browser. Like, you know, is Chrome responsible for every crazy website that someone puts up? It's like not that that shouldn't be the case. Right. So maybe like I have some responsibility for the bootstrap relay list that I initially. So there's some initial set of relays that you connect to. So maybe that would have to be locked down just because I'm providing that. I don't want that to be the case because I want this to be like an open network. But it really depends. I have to look through the Apple terms of service and because I don't want to get banned. I really like the app I'm working on. But if I do get banned, I'm, I'm actually not that worried. It'll just give me more time to focus on the Android version or something. So, uh, it, yeah, it would be it would be sad. But it, I could totally see Apple maybe um, getting upset about this app just because it's too much free speech or something. I don't know. Too much free speech. <laughs> Holy Shut moly. him down. <laughs> um, biggest reward that you've experienced building this client? I just love seeing people get excited. Like it kind of reminds me of the early days of IRC or like the kind of the old school internet protocols where people would just like join these crazy, fun, weird networks that people are communicating with each other freely. And just the amount of feedback like I'm getting from people saying like, this is revolutionary. I, I'm like, this is like, changing, this is blowing my mind. And they're so, people are so excited. I'm like, oh, that's cool. I'm just sending JSON messages over web sockets. I don't, I guess it's kind of cool, but in, in some sense it does have these um, wide reaching implications. And so I, for me, it's always just been kind of like this toy thing. And, and this was always the same thing with Bitcoin as well. I just, I loved, I got in like 2010, just playing. It was always just a toy to me. I didn't know anything about monetary theory. The more I started to build it out, I'm like, holy crap, this actually does have some pretty big implications. And, and I think that's why people are excited. It's like they can see the future where, you know, free speech is not limited on the internet and then that it's easy, it's easy to communicate with people without getting blocked. So um, we have a lot of people that listen to this show. What would help you out the most? for people listening to this? I think if people just want to get involved, if people want to even just contribute, if you're a coder and you want to contribute, or if you're like a designer and you want to design, you know, suggest improvements to the app, or, you know, if you want to write about it, if you're a writer and you want to spread the word, all these things are helpful. Um, Cause I think education is going to be a big part of this just because it's just a new thing and it's kind of confusing. Um, so just be able to like communicate what it is and what it isn't. It's not another like true social platform. It's not like, you know, this is a truly a, a different beast. Um, so, you know, just, yeah, learn about it, you know, just write about it, like help out, contribute. It's like, a, it's a very, it's an open source project. Everyone seems, everyone's very welcoming. So yeah, get involved. And that's, a, that, I can't ask for more really. I've seen some comments about Fediment uh, being incorporated into this, and I'm not so sure that I fully have wrapped my head around the implications of that. Can you First of all, explain very generically uh, Fediment and then talk about how that fits into Noster. Yeah, so I actually don't know anything about Fediment. <laughs> so I am a Bitcoin dev and I, I work on Bitcoin Core and, and Core Lightning. And I love I love Lightning. I haven't had a lot of time to jump into like the eCash um, for, uh, whole thing. So I couldn't give like a, a technical breakdown or even a high level breakdown. But more generally, what I was trying to say with that post was I really want Domus to be a Bitcoin only I want to, like a Bitcoin only app on top of Nostra where you can make it re- just everything related to Bitcoin and interacting with Bitcoin with your friends. I just want to make it easy as possible to do that within the app. So if there's some way to send eCash using Fediment over over Domus and maybe do another widget that like we do with the Bolt 11 widgets, I think that'd be cool. Making it easier to do multi-sig stuff on 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 Domus would be fun. Like imagine if you have a group DM chat and you all want to co- cooperatively sign a Bitcoin transaction or something, you can just paste your PSBTs in a chat and then it'll like build up this It'll combine the PSBTs and whatnot to like have them for a multi-sig transaction. So anything that makes it easier to use Bitcoin inside this app, that's kind of what I want to focus on and want to make the best user experience for. Because, you know, I'm a Bitcoiner. I love Bitcoin. And we, I know a lot of the underlying protocol is built by Bitcoiners. So 
I'm leveraging a lot of that energy. And it's not to say Domus is like a Bitcoin only app. It's just right now we have a lot of Bitcoin users and I want to support them. So, Well, when we look at Lightning, Bitcoin Lightning, and we see the immediate settlement and we see the fees, which are for all intents and purposes, non-existent, it almost seems like that's just the natural thing to be used for something like this. When you look at these other things that are quote unquote blockchains, even though we kind of smirk when we say that, I don't think that from a fee standpoint, I just don't know how any of that would even work as seamlessly as, as lightning would on this. Would you agree with that? And I'm assuming that's where you see the future going based on how you're working with client. Yeah. So it's interesting because Nostra doesn't really care about what you use it with, right? So Nostra has nothing to do with Bitcoin or lightning. I just think lightning is great. And the way to show that is great is to maybe integrate it into a social network. So that's what I'm trying to do with Domus. But there's no reason why you couldn't create like a Monero client and, you, and all people who love Monero, they want to use Monero within the app and you have little tip buttons for Monero. Like, sure, you can do that. So we could totally maybe see in the future where there's clients that have all these different you know, tokens and people can use them in any way they want, but we can still all interoperate and I don't have to like see a Monero tip button in my client. Yeah, I just, Lightning makes so much sense. Just the instant settlement and it's and the protocol, it's decent. There's still some issues with Lightning in terms of liquidity and stuff, but me, and I'm hoping maybe this network will uncover some of those issues and make improve liquidity just from people trying to pay each other, right? So. So people are familiar with Mastodon um, as a former free speech platform that can't be shut down by any central entity. Why is this different than Mastodon or other attempts at doing this in a decentralized way? So this is a really good question because, you know, I spent probably two years on ActivityPub or Mastodon or whatever. Mastodon's a client for ActivityPub's protocol. And... What ended up happening, I noticed there were some severe flaws, some very bad flaws with uh, Mastodon, or at least just the way that the federation on that protocol is set up. So typically, your typical experience when you join this platform is like you'll join an instance, it's called. So it might be, you know, Mastodon.social. And then you'll get an account, you have all your followers set up, but that server is run by a single admin and they have sole discretion to like ban you at any point for anything you say. And then once they do that, there's no way, to, you have to start over. You have to go to another instance, hopefully they... But you're already like psychologically scarred and you're, I noticed that I was like censoring myself just because I'm like, I hope they don't say anything bad. So the admin bans me and I have to start over. Even on the Bitcoin instance, like I know NVK is, is cool and he runs a Bitcoin hackers instance, but like, I'm like, if I say something bad about cold card, maybe I'll get banned. So like, you know, it, it, whenever you have one person in control of like, o, of a social graph, it gets really bad. So I think that's the biggest and it's a huge flaw with Mastodon. And that's why I eventually, I was trying to write it in activity pub node and clients and stuff. And I'm like, I give up. This is just not going to work. And that's when I started focusing on Nostra because I'm like, okay, this Nostra solves a problem because your contact list and your social graph, you control it. You can put it back it up on your note and you can broadcast it anywhere. And you can't be, you know, you don't have to start over every time, right? I mean, I just look at the amount of time I've spent on Twitter in the past decade. And if I got banned and they just deleted all that history of those interactions, I mean, it's just, it's a massive blow to people that are interacting in a public kind of way. And so your point there, as far as like admins controlling it, I mean, it's just, this needs to happen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> in, some sense, in some sense, Mastodon is worse than Twitter because like, I thought I was getting, I got banned from like three instances in the span of like, I'm not even a controversial person. I just like, I said yeah. Bitcoin once and like, it's so full of like people on the left. I just got banned for just saying Bitcoin. I'm like, all right, this is crazy. So there's another attempt at decentralized social media with Blue Sky. What are the differences between Nostr and Blue Sky? So I briefly looked at Blue Sky. Um, it seems what they're trying to do is uh, they're trying to build a specifically a social media protocol. And in some sense, that's what we're doing on Nostra, but Nostra is a bit more general. And they're trying to design it for scale. So you have like really big nodes and it and then it, that it's really easy to set up these big nodes and they're very performant and things like that. And I think that's actually a really interesting way to do it. And I think that we should totally explore that. And maybe one day Nostra can interact with those types of nodes. So I think it's not a waste of time as much as I'm like a Nostra maximalist. But yeah, it's really just subtle differences in terms of how data is communicated and types of technology they use. But yeah, they're very similar. And that, this is the cool thing about, you know, there's so many decentralized protocols now we can kind of just battle them against each other. I love to see, like, I've been getting ideas from other protocols, like, hey, that's good. Yeah, we should implement caching at this part of Nostra. So I think the competition is good. And I think that's, uh, yeah. One of the things that I've noticed with using it is it's a little bit slow to load, but I don't have my own personal relay set up yet. 
if I had my own relay set up, would that solve that? Or how do we get kind of the speed that we're accustomed to with Twitter through Noster? So the relay that I'm running is like written by like this one guy who just built it in his spare time. And it's, there's not even that, like, we've been going back and forth and trying to optimize some basic stuff, but there's almost been no performance optimization done on the relay side. I was working on something called, it doesn't have a name, but it was just a, a caching relay so they can sit in front of your relay that will, doesn't have to do the full query, but can return oh. results. We don't even have basic caching yet on, on the, per, on the relay side. So anytime you experience slowness, it's just because everyone is querying everything at the same time. Oh. Um, and yeah. we just haven't done that part of performance tuning, but these things will come with time. And yeah, just for now, just adding more relays kind of spreads out the load and seems to help a little bit, but yeah, we definitely need to improve performance on the relay side. Would you have caches on the client side as well, which would help improve the speed? Yeah, there's, I mean, Domus doesn't do this, but it could just like cache more things. I don't like the idea of storing like a huge historical cache in Domus because it'll start to get bloated. You imagine all the data has to store from like, but it could totally, there's no reason why it couldn't st store like stuff that you're tweeting in real time. It doesn't really help in the cases when you're trying to pull an old thread because mm -hmm. the client definitely probably wouldn't have that. And that's the case where it seems to be the slowest because we don't have the relay caches yet, but hopefully oh, in time, I hope we can get it more performance. What in general, what do you think brings the user migration to Noster? Is it just the freest and most open way to communicate is going to win in the long run? Or like, what do you, what's your thoughts around that? I think just because it made it so easy, you know, you don't have to, you know, create an account, you have to, you know, add your phone number. So it's just so easy to onboard people onto the platform they, and it's just, and they just get it instantly. I think that's a huge one. Obviously, Jack talking about it, Jack Dorsey has just been tweeting about it. So that's, that was a huge boost, but it was cool. It, it was cool just to see so many people get in and that it was somewhat stable and it didn't just crash right away. So people just seeing that it works and is somewhat stable, they started to be like, Hey, this might actually work. And like that was something I always want to do with the Domus client. It's like prove this, that it could actually work. It's still come somewhat of a prototype. Is this going to work at scale? So we're up to 10, 10,000 users now. I think I see like 2000 or so people connected to my server at any given time. So who like, who knows what the next stage of scaling is? Let's see if we can get this up to like 30,000, 200,000. So yeah, we're still early, but. I can't it, believe, <laughs> William, I can't believe how active Jack is. Jack Dorsey is on the platform right now. I mean, he is very active. He's called you. What are some of your thoughts around Jack being so active on it? I think, I think he got it so quickly just because this is what he, in some sense, wanted Twitter to be. I'm guessing it's like nostalgic for him because it probably reminds him. And he tweeted about this reminds him of Twitter sub 5,000 users, but better. Right when he said that, my servers went down basically. That, that caused so much FOMO when he said that. But uh, yeah, I, I think Jack just, he sees the potential of the protocol and he just wants to support that. Even though he's also supporting the co competing protocol, Blue Sky, right? So he just he has the same idea. Like, let's see which best protocol win. And uh, so it's cool. Yeah, it's cool to have the support and to see how... We call him the, uh, the Walmart like greeter guy. Cause he just, he's always there. He's like, Hey, he just sends this emoji to everyone. <laughs> um, so it's funny. He's been a very active user on the network, which has been awesome to see and hang out with them. So last question is just your Bitcoin story. Oh yeah. I don't know. I think I just saw it on Hacker News in like late 2010. And I just like, just jumped on and started playing with it. Jumped in the IRC channel and just like chatted. I was chatting with some of the people at the time. Someone was named Sipa. I didn't know who he was. Turns out he's like now a major core developer. So he got me into the, in the system really early. Yeah. And then, you know, I've always used it. I worked at a record label and I, we were selling our albums in 2013, a record label called Monster Cat. So that was kind of cool to see if we can actually start selling stuff on this network. Um, but yeah, I just, it was always just kind of this fun protocol, kind of like Nostra. I just like, it was just a fun thing to play with. I, I wasn't like super into monetary theory or like, you know, <laughs> some of the stuff I know now, but the community has really like educated me on all that stuff afterwards, but it was just, it's just been a while to see it, it just see it grow from the start. So, so William, I know you're active on Nostra for sure. You're definitely active on Twitter as well. Give people a handoff. I'm assuming you're going to get some interest from this discussion of how people can help out. Tell them where they can find you and anything else you want to highlight. We'll have links in the show notes to all this stuff so that people can quickly access you, but give them a handoff. Yeah. So for Nostra, I highly recommend checking out our GitHub. It's github.com slash Nostra dash protocol slash Nostra. And then there'll be a link there to the, our Telegram. We probably have like 4,000 or something people in there by now. So it's a huge group of people who just, you can ask questions there. They'll help you get you onboarded. Yeah. You can find me on, I don't, I'm not going to announce my whole pub key. I don't know if I could say, it, but uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm sure you'll find me talking on there. You can, if you go to the global feed, you'll find me. 
Um, yeah, and just my Twitter is uh, JB55, my website, JB55.com. So yeah. Fantastic. We'll have links to all that in the show notes. I know you are an extremely busy guy right now. So taking time out to have this conversation for a full hour, I really appreciate that. And I know that all the listeners are going to appreciate it as well. So thank you for your time. This has been awesome. Thank you so much for having me. So thanks. I'm worried for people out there. You know, we talk about it in numbers and we talk, these are people's lives, man. These are people's lives. I'm long the US dollar because I think as the world goes into a recession, we're going to have a flight to safety. I think this is going to be a big test for Bitcoin, personally. 